Look, one of the things about becoming an entrepreneur or an intrapreneur, you want to move up, right? You're trying to really move up and succeed in your game. You're going to be hit by so many different things. You're going to get in so many different situations that you don't know how to handle them that if you don't have any kind of way to settle down your mental and emotional state, you won't know how to handle it. Then you go back and you're losing and you have to shut down your business, right? So one philosophy that a lot of entrepreneurs have been picking up is stoicism. And in this episode, I'm going to give you a lot of the ways they thought that can help you in the process of you building your business. So what most people don't know about stoicism is the fact that it got started by a guy who was an entrepreneur that lost everything and he had to figure out a way to think better so he can re-engage and rebuild his business. This is Zeno. Back in the days around 303 BC, his business was, you know, he is shipwrecked, he loses everything, he has a loss, comes back at that time, the guy that everybody was studying was Socrates. He started studying Socrates, through Socrates, a few different philosophies were branching out, skepticism, cynicism, stoicism, and Seneca was kind of leading the stoicism, and the next thing you know, all these other names came from stoicism. And the whole idea about stoicism is really four different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you what those are, and 10 things that you as an entrepreneur, you as an entrepreneur can pick up to think like them that helps you continuously advance in business. So when you look at stoicism, you're looking at four ways of thinking. One is make the best use of your time. Seneca once said, some periods of time are snatched from us, some are stolen, and some simply seep away. Yet the most shameful loss is the loss due to carelessness. So what is he really talking about? You know, so many times you lose time, not because of you, because something else happened to you. But the one part that you have to be fully upset about is when you lose time because you're being careless about your own time. And a lot of time that happens for lack of preparation. So that's number one. So the second one is being a master of emotions. A big part of business is your emotions are going to be going nuts. That was my intro when I gave it to you, right? There are three Greek words that Stoics follow. One is apathia. Freedom from emotions. Number two is ataraxis, which is state of tranquility where your emotions become impenetrable. And last but not least is autoraxis, which is your ability to maintain inner freedom. The whole idea is as you're building whatever you're building, you have to figure out a way to control your emotions because nothing, I'm telling you right now, 90% of the things that you're trying to do when you build a business, it happens out of nowhere. You don't know it's going to be taking place to you. If you don't have control of your emotions, you won't know how to handle them. Number three, walk the path of virtue. Why is this critical? I had a guy I talked to the other day. They called me while I was in Jamaica. I was doing this conference call. And he was part of his other agency. And he said, yeah, this guy was doing this, and he was doing this, and he was doing that. This guy had a lot of money back in the 80s and the 90s. What happened with this guy? He, he walked away from virtues, lost everything, is facing 72 years in prison because he started ripping people off, and that completely ruins the guy's momentum. So if you're walking the path of virtue, you eliminate start-stops. What is start-stops? I'm starting, I create momentum, boom, I lose everything because I try to take a shortcut, I have to come back again. Again, I start. I start experiencing momentum, I think about taking another shortcut, I come back again. Every single time you go back and forth, but if you build your business based on the right virtues, right values, right principles, you are continuously compounding your momentum there you have. And last but not least, a self-mastery. So that'll lead me to the 10 points here. Now, for some of you that want to take this concept of stoicism deeper, there's four guys you got to study. What is Zeno, Epictetus, Marcus Aurelius, Seneca? There's a lot of books you can study, but I suggest you go study these as individuals. You can study discourses, you can study meditations, you can study a lot of these books, but those are the main four uh, uh, Stoics, Stoics to study. So those are some of the basic four things I'm talking to you about, but you can read a lot about Stoicism. You'll also hear about wisdom, temperance, justice, courage, and a bunch of different things, but this is the basic foundation. Now, having said this, I wanted to share with you 10 ways Stoics think that helps you as the CEO, executive, entrepreneur, entrepreneur to better handle these issues when they come up. Number one, a Stoic looks at things from the stand of worst case scenario. They call it negative visualization. What does this mean? They automatically go to worst case. If I make this decision, what is the worst case that could take place? Well, if we do this, we could be out of business. Well, then let's, we have to adapt. Or yeah, if we do this, we could be out of business. Well, if we don't do this, what's gonna happen? We'll never be a competitor. Well, guess what? Let's just do it anyways. Because there's a risk as a businessman anyways, we'll be out of business, but they at least know that if they make this risk, there's a 10% chance they'll be out of business. They go immediately to a uh, uh, worst case scenario. Anticipation and what it does is, by far the biggest thing that it does, by far the biggest thing that it does, it lessens the impact. You know how sometimes when you go to the doctor and the doctor gives you a shot 
and they'll say, it's going to feel like dot, dot, dot. So then you get the shot. It feels like what they said. You anticipated it, and it didn't hurt you because you kind of knew what's coming. Versus if they don't tell you, then you're like, oh, my gosh, what was that all about? You didn't anticipate it. Just like that, they like to go to negative visualization, worst case scenario. Then they decide what they do. They create all these different audibles. Then they make the decision. Number one, worst case scenario. Number two, wealth versus mastery. Earlier today, I sent a tweet out, and the tweet said, if your goal, if your main goal in life is to chase millions, you will eventually slow down. But if your main goal in life is to chase mastery and experience mastery, you will never slow down because there's no such thing as slowing down, right? There's a lot of people online that they get the house, they get the car, they get the girl, and then all of a sudden they slow down. There's a lot of guys that get the money and they think life's going to be so much crazier. And then all of a sudden they're surprised and they're like, oh my gosh, I thought it was going to be a million times better. I slow down. Now, what is a million times better isn't the material things. What is a million times better is that idea of mastery, the way you process things, the way you look at the world in a whole different way than everybody else thinks about. Seneca, again, once said, wealth is the slave of the wise, but master of the fool. Listen. Wealth is the slave of the wise, but master of the fool. Meaning, money controls the fool who doesn't realize money can be your slave. You tell money what to do, not the other way around. Seneca was a rich man when he died. He wasn't a poor man, but he understood he told money what to do, not the other way around. So number two is the idea of wealth versus mastery. Number three, avoiding judging. This whole idea about judging, we all judge. We judge all the time. Oh my gosh, look what he's wearing, look what she's wearing. Look at the way he said this. Why did he say that? Why did he say that? The more you can get in a state to say, I honestly have no idea what they went through this. A divorce takes place, immediately everybody wants to say, it's his fault, it's her fault. No one knows what happened. You are not there 24 seven to see what happened. Oh my gosh, look at this guy. What took place with him and his business and look at this guy and what took place with him. No one knows what the whole idea is and all the stories that took place. So for them, because they avoid judging, they don't consume their brain thinking about somebody else's reason for failing because they are so much consumed about trying to figure themselves out. When you judge, you have to start thinking about what other people did and why they felt, I don't have time for that. I'm trying to figure myself out. They avoid judging to the best of their abilities. Number four, rational logic perspective. In the world of business, you have to have emotions, but you have to also understand you know, rational logic and perspective. What is emotions? If you don't constantly talk about the emotional aspect of why you started your company, the vision, the cause, that lowers your social capital. And you need a lot of social capital. Social capital, when bad things happen, you sit your group down and say, listen guys, let me tell you why we did this company. Did you forget about it? We built this company because we said we can do X, Y, Z better. And we said we can serve the clients better. And I know we're going through this right now, but let's not forget what we did. Look how far we've come along. We're making a difference in people's lives. That's needed. A lot of that is needed at times. But the leader, the CEO, the entrepreneur, the entrepreneur internally needs to understand rational, logic, perspective. When you do that, you make better decisions, sound decisions, better investments, better technology. You reason better because everything is based on data, numbers, predictive analytics, trends. Nothing is about just, oh my gosh, I feel good about it. Here's $800,000. Oh, I just like the guy. Here's $6 million investment. No, no, no. You have to come back to this. By the way, VC folks, money folks, any of these guys that give money in that world, private equity guys, they're all rational logic perspective is where they're at. That's a thought pattern of a stoic. Number five, less hate to your competitors, instead understanding. Meaning, when I was initially coming up and my competitors were bashing me nonstop, I couldn't understand them. I was like, how could you say such a thing about what we're doing? But the moment I started studying a bit of uh, stoicism, I started realizing, I understand what they're doing. Their number one job when they wake up in the morning is to put me out of business. They need my market share and I'm taking it away from them. Once I understood this concept, I stopped being upset at them. I fully understand, understood them. Our relationship actually became better because I know what they were trying to do. Very simple relationship, if that makes any sense to you. Okay, so number five, you actually understand your competitors better. Number six, willpower. This is kind of strange on what Stoics will sometimes do. So for instance, what they mean by willpower is a Stoic will sometimes sacrifice something. Let's just say you've already made your millions or you've made money and you can afford to go first class or you can afford to do certain things. They will sometimes sacrifice what they can afford 
to remind them of what it was like to have nothing. Because as you start making money, you start believing your own hype. Everybody around you tells you how amazing you are, how special you are. Oh my gosh, look at you, you're a genius. You're doing so great, et cetera, et cetera. They will step away and put themselves in situations to sacrifice what they can easily afford to remind them what it was like to have nothing that produces the feeling of gratitude. They lead better, they appreciate what they have better, and it obviously ends up producing better relationships and people stick around with them long term. Okay, so number seven, a stoic is driven by the freedom to think for themselves, right? So as you're building a business, everyone gives you an opinion. You should do this, you should do that, you should do that, you should do this, you should do that, you should do this. Everyone's telling you what to do. Everybody all of a sudden becomes an expert, right? It's like when you get married, Everybody starts saying, when are you going to have a kid? When are you going to have a kid? When are you should have a kid early? You should have a kid early. You should have a kid early. You should have a kid early. So for me, whenever somebody gets married, one of the first things I'll say is I say, listen, just so you know, your in-laws and your in-laws are immediately going to start saying, when are you going to have a kid? And then if you don't have it for a year or two, they'll start saying your stuff doesn't work and your stuff doesn't work. Anticipate it and stop them in the beginning and just tell them, we're not planning on having kids for a few years, even if you're planning on having kids, if that makes any sense. So if you get pregnant, you got pregnant. If you don't get pregnant, no one's putting you to pressure there, right? Anticipation. They like to think for themselves, right? Henry Thoreau once said, to a philosopher, all news, as it is called, is gossip. And they who edit and read it are old women over tea. To my Armenian friends who are watching this, there's a phrase they call keskenik. If you know what keskenik means, you know exactly what this means. Like in the Armenian community, you would see you know, your auntie and your grandma, and they would sit, seven-year-olds, they're having coffee. Did you hear what this person said? Did you hear what that person said? That's what this guy's trying to say, Henry Throw, he's a philosopher. The point is, you cannot consume too much biased content. Let me explain. I know people that only watch Fox. I know people that only watch CNN. One of the reasons why, if you can figure out a way to avoid watching the news, rather read it from a writer or somebody that is unbiased sharing what took place, Fact statements, not the ones that they add their own twist to it, right? You watch Fox, you know what they're going to say. You watch CNN, MSNBC, you know what they're going to say. Stoics want to think for themselves. And when you have somebody saying it, they're adding their emotions into it. Rather, I have three news emails I read every morning. It's unbiased. Here's what happened with China. This is what's going on with Venezuela. Here's what happened with Apple yesterday. This is what happened with such and such yesterday. Facts, 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 facts. No opinion. Facts, 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 right? And that's what you're taking. And then you and I have the opportunity to decipher between the stats and say, you know what? I think this. I think that I'm good because you want to think for yourself. In the world of business, you have to figure out a way to think for yourself because many times you will make a decision that nobody will support, but you have access to all the information and you are making that decision. If after making a decision, you're still consuming all the content from other people that are naysayers, you are going to backtrack, you're not going to play offense, you'll be defensive, you'll be a little bit hesitant. Made your decision, I don't want to hear about it, we're moving on, this is what we're doing. Game, 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 let's go, right? That's what it means by they are driven by freedom to think for themselves. Point number eight, they're overly protective of their environment. I mean, when I say overly, it's like overly obsessive, protective, like get away from me if you are negative. I don't want to hear any of it. Epictetus once said, above all, keep a close watch on this, that you are never so tied to your former acquaintances and friends that you are pulled down to their level. If you don't, you will be ruined. You must choose whether to be loved by these friends and remain the same person or to become a better person at the cost of those friends. If you try to have it both ways, you will neither make progress nor keep what you once had. Very simple. I mean, there's nothing complicated about what he said. What he's trying to say is, yeah, I want to go be successful, but I still want to party with my friends. Yeah, I want to go be an entrepreneur, create my own business, but I still want to be with my friends. My, we used to party together, I man. We drank together. I still want to kick it with them. But you understand, we go way back. We're boys. That's my girlfriend. That's my boo right there. That's my, that's my people right here. But then I want to go be successful. They don't go together. They just don't. Which one do you want? You want to party? Stay here. You want to go here? Go here. Now, a couple of your friends may have said, I also want to go here, and they're working just as hard as you. They want it as bad as you. That's a different story. What Epictetus is saying, you want to go here, but your friends are pulling you back from not wanting to win big, and you want to change the ways you think because the old ways of thinking is not going to get you the life that you want. You got to cut one of them off. And if you don't cut this off, you ain't going to go and get the distance of winning. So you have to anticipate that part. 
and be protective of your environment. Number nine, authenticity. Let me explain to you what they mean by authenticity. You'll keep hearing about phrases of, you gotta model this person, model his behavior, model her behavior, model this person's behavior, model this person, that person, this person. But if you model too much, you don't even know it, you all of a sudden imitate. And if you imitate, you all of a sudden lose your own uniqueness. Now, some people model because they're uncomfortable with their quirkiness, with, with their own like flaws. Like for me, you know how many times I say certain words and you say, Pat, that's not proper English. I'm okay with it, but it's me. Oh, Pat, sometimes you say the sentence and it's a run on. That's okay. I'm comfortable with it. You understand what point I'm trying to make. That is my quirkiness. That is my flaw. That is my issue. I'm very okay with it, right? but I'm not trying to model to speak like somebody else. If you were to go out there and say, well, Pat speaks like this person, you wouldn't be able to say it because I don't know how to speak like anybody else. This is just the way I talk. You have to figure out a way to do you. You have to be authentic on how you are. Accept your flaws, accept your issues, accept the fact that you have quirks, differences. Don't make it something like you try to avoid doing certain things because what if somebody finds out about your quirks? That's your signature to the world. Don't let any of that stuff bother you, right? Authentic, yourself. Number 10, last but not least, adapt and move on. Epictetus once said, if you are defeated once and you tell yourself that you will overcome it, but carry on as before, know in the end you'll also be so ill and weakened that eventually you won't even notice your mistake and will begin to rationalize your behavior. Okay, so if you just told yourself, Pat, that sounded good, but I have no clue what the hell he just said right there. Let me explain to you what he's trying to say. What he's trying to say is, okay, so I did something, I made a mistake, but I want to move on, but I'm still clinging to my old habits and ways that I try to solve the problem this way, and I face another issues, and I'm still trying to solve in a method that I solved before. Don't expect anything to improve, because you haven't yet adapted and moved on. Adapting means I tried a way, it didn't work, I adapted, made adjustments, have a different approach to it, then I advance. So you'll see a lot of people that hit a wall, right? And then they'll make a decision that didn't work, that wasn't the best decision, they'll go down. And then they get to the same wall again, they make the same exact decision again, they keep falling back down. And they're wondering why this doesn't work. Like so many people, for example, say you are wired to be an entrepreneur and you're a very great entrepreneur. You try four or five times to become an entrepreneur, it doesn't work for you, you realize, I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna do it again, that's fine. Maybe your positioning is an entrepreneur. You know, you try to go out there and reposition yourself to do something you're not good at, and you keep fighting, 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 you're not adapting. You have to understand what your strengths are. You have to understand what your abilities are. And the more you're playing to that, the more you can make adjustments. But if you don't make any adjustments and adapt, you'll keep going back and getting the same results, and nothing will, nothing will change. And eventually you hear this phrase, business just wasn't for me. I just couldn't do it. I don't know if this industry is for me. I don't know if that industry is for me. I tried real estate. I tried that guy just I was talking to right now. This guy has changed industries 10 times. And every time he changed industries, good guy, every time he changes industry. But it's the industry. This one's not for me. I, this is the one that's for me. And then again, that doesn't want, but, but this is the one for me. But that's the one for me. It's not about that's the one for you. Everything you do when you reach an issue, if you make the decisions, the same exact approach you took before, Nothing's gonna change. So you have to learn to adapt and move on. Okay, so a couple things. If you watch this today and you're thinking, Pat, I wanna go a little bit deeper into this topic, there's two videos I want you to watch. One is 12 mistakes I made as an entrepreneur. This kind of covers with you the challenges I faced, right? What things I went through. If you haven't watched it, click on this one. And the other one is a mindset. It's an interview I did with Jordan Peterson that goes a little bit deeper into why he thinks the way he thinks. It's not all about politics and all this other stuff. Why is he wired the way, it is, the way he is? He'll help you think in a completely different way. There's a part of him that's also stoic as well. That's why I'm saying Jordan Peterson. So 12 Mistakes as an Entrepreneur, the Jordan Peterson interview. And if you want today's PDF, click on the link below in the description to go get the PDF and look at this entire thing for yourself. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, click on the sub button. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.